All right, guys, so let's just do a couple more examples together about writing the equation of a line. I know that that can kind of be tricky for some people, and you did do it last year, but, I mean, that's been a whole year. So let's just practice it a little bit more. So major step in writing the equation of a line is knowing the slope. So we talked about in class that if I want to write the equation of a line, usually we write it as y equals mx plus b, where like m is my slope, and then b is my y-intercept. But in my video, I told you there's actually another form of a line that I actually prefer. It's kind of easier, I think. It's less work. Um, and that's point slope form, which is that y minus y sub 1 equals m parenthesis x minus x1. So I like to use that one. That one's just a little bit nicer. It still has slope, um, but your point here, the x1, y1 thing, that's less specific, so easier to do. Um, it's kind of harder and more specific to have your y-intercept. That's one point. Um, this can be any point. That has to be a specific one point, so that's why. Anyways. All that to say, though, on these first two, we're just going to find the slope of the line passing through the given points. Now, what I'll see a lot of people do, like when I'm checking an assignment, is they'll graph the two points and try to count it out, which you could totally do because we could do rise over run. But there is a formula where we do the change in y. So rise is how much up or down. So like how much is y changing? So y minus y over the change in x. So like how much left or right, which is my run. So it makes sense. And we can subtract in whatever order we want. We just have to be consistent. So the order of my pairs is x, y, x, y. And so I'm going to pick the y's. And I could do 0 minus 8, but that seems super negative. So I don't want to do that. I'm actually going to do 8 minus 0. So I started with this point and did 8 minus 0 which is fine, but then on my x's, I have to start with the negative 6. So that's kind of a bummer, but negative 6 minus 2. And then we simplify the top, simplify the bottom, so 8 minus 0 is 0, or 8, geez. And then negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8, and then we can reduce to negative 1. And that's all we're trying to do on that problem, just finding the slope. Okay, so for the next one, same idea. We do y minus y over x minus x, x, y, x, y. Again, I could do negative 1 minus 8, but that's going to stay negative. And if I think it through a little bit, if I actually go the other way and do 8 minus negative 1, that'll turn into a plus. So I'm actually going to go in that direction as well. So 8 minus negative 1 will really be plus. And then since I started with the second point, I have to start with the 2 on the bottom. So 2 minus negative 3. So it works out again. That's super nice. Okay, so we have 9 over 5, which doesn't reduce or divide evenly. So I'm just going to leave it like that. It's kind of good and nice to leave slope as a fraction because then I can see my rise and my run if I care about that. Okay, another type of problem is how to graph a line. So this is in y equals mx plus b form. And I can tell because the y is all by itself. Um, if there were parentheses or a number over here with y, then I might be in a different form, but we're not. So that means that this is my slope and this is my y-intercept or my b right here. And so when we're graphing the line, I don't ever like to graph on just blank paper like this. I'm very weird about we must graph on graph paper, but I'm going to make an exception. You're going to see it right now. It's going to happen. It's okay. So when we're graphing, we always first want to plot a point. We have to have a point to start from, and then we have another point so that I can connect the two points to get a line. That's how we always have to draw a line. So I need to start with this point here, which is a very specific point. It's my y-intercept. So it's at 0, negative 1, so like there-ish. 
Um, and then I need to do my slope after that. So my slope is like a direction. It's like how much I go and then how much I go. So I'm going to need to go down three. And then since I did the negative on top, that means the bottom is positive. So I'm going to go in the positive four direction. So down three, one, two, three spaces over four. Now two is enough. I could graph my line right now, but I could also go the other direction. So instead of making the three negative, I could go three positive, one, two, three, and then go negatively four. So left four, one, two, three, four, and plot that point there. And they all lie on the same line. So that's good and makes sense. And my line looks like it's negative, which it should. Um, so yeah, cool. Okay, write the equation of a line. So we want to write an equation of a line. We can either do y equals mx plus b, or we can do our point slope form, which I really like. Um, and so for this first one, when they tell me the slope, and then just this general point, I'm probably going to go point slope form so that y minus y1 equals m parenthesis x minus x1. And I'm going to do that because I have slope, so I can just plop that in there. And this point is just a general point. It's not specific. It's not my y-intercept. So I can't just put it in for b, but I can just put x in here and y in here, and then I have an equation. So let's just do that. That seems way easier. So y minus 2 equals 3 fourths, parenthesis, x minus negative 8, so plus 8. Now if I wanted to, I could distribute and then add the 2 over, but kind of doesn't matter. So we won't. Now the next one. It, my equation of the line passes through these two points. So that's a real bummer because I need slope if I want to write any equation and I don't have it yet, so I'm going to have to find it. So we'll do our y minus y. Oh, and I actually am going to go in order. 8 minus negative 4 over, so since I'm starting with this point, negative 1 minus 5 on bottom. So that's going to be 12 on top and negative 6 on bottom. So negative 2 is my slope. Then, because both of these points are just general points, neither of them are my y-intercept, I think I'm going to do like I did right here and use my point slope form because that's easier. So we'll do y minus, and I'll just go with that first point again. Why not? Doesn't matter. We can pick either. So we'll do y minus 8 equals negative 2, parenthesis, x minus negative 1. So the double negative becomes a plus. And just for practice on this one, like again, you could just leave it like this. But just for practice, if I want to put it in y equals mx plus b, we would distribute. So I'd have y minus 8 equals negative 2x minus 2. So negative 2 times 1. And then I'd add the 8. And so we'd be left with y equals, so y is by itself, y equals mx plus p, um, negative 2x plus 6, which sometimes we want to do that. Now I made a little note for myself down here that we want to talk about horizontal and vertical lines as well. And just generally, like, if I'm graphing a horizontal line, horizontal lines are the ones that um, are lying down. So, like, horizontal like that. And so, like, this is my x-axis. This is my y-axis. The equation of a horizontal line will always be y equals a number. So, for instance, if you had a horizontal line going through the point 2 comma negative 4, then in this case, I would say that my equation is y equals negative 4 because that's what y is in this point. Now, similarly, kind of, for um, vertical lines, so in a vertical line, do, 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 x, y axis, if we had a vertical line like this one, 
Boop. Those equations are always x equals some number, which feels like super backwards, honestly, because like this is the x-axis and this is a y equals equation. Like what the heck? I just always remembered opposite, but truly it's because no matter where I go on this line, y is always the same number, but x is changing. And similarly here, like this is the y-axis, but this is like an x equal equation. Well, that's because no matter where I go on this line, x is always the same number. And so if I said to you that a vertical line was going to go through the point 2 comma negative 4, then that means this equation would be x equals 2. Okay, good luck.